JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for February the 17th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFT and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against uh, all the other G10 currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian morning Wednesday. It uh, outperformed uh, the most versus NOC, NZD and CAT in that order, while it gained the least against uh, GBP, the Japanese yen and SEC. Now the strengthening of the US dollar and the safe haven uh, yen combined uh, with uh, the weakening in the commodity linked Kiwi and Looney suggests uh, that uh, markets traded in a risk of uh, fashion yesterday and today, in, and today in Asia. However, as we know that recently the US dollar may have started losing its safe haven appeal and thus in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here most of um, most of the major EU indices ended their session in the red, while in the US both the S&P 500 and Nasdaq uh, slid 0.06 and 0.34% respectively. Only Dow Jones gained 0.20%. The negative investor morale rolled somewhat over into the Asian session today. Although Hong Kong's Hang Seng gained 0.60%, Japan's Nikkei and South Korea's KOSPI fell 0.58 and 0.93%. China Shanghai Composite State closed due to the celebrations of the Lunar New Year. The strengthening of the US dollar and the retreat in equities may have been the result of rising US Treasury yields as investors may have reckoned that the stimulus-fueled global recovery will eventually drive inflation higher. However, with central banks around the world committed to keep their policy extra loose for long, we stick to our guns that equities are likely to continue trending north for a while more. We would treat yesterday's pullback or any short-term extensions of it as a corrective move before the next leg higher. The declining coronavirus infections, the vaccinations and the large fiscal package in the US are all developments that may keep investors' appetite supported as well. As uh, for today, market participants are likely to lock their gaze on the minutes from the latest FOMC gathering. At that meeting, the committee decided to keep its monetary policy settings unchanged, with the only material change in the statement being the part saying that the pace of the recovery in economic activity and employment has moderated in recent months. While there was some market chatter over QE tapering at the press conference following the decision, Fed Chair Powell cre clearly stated that it's too early to focus on tapering dates. We've heard from him last week as well with the tone of his speech staying on the dovish side. He noted that the improvement in the labor market has stalled in recent months and even if we do see a strong labor market soon, they will not tighten monetary policy solely in response to that. He affirmed that they will keep interest rates at current levels until the economy has reached maximum employment and inflation stays above 2% for some time. With all that in mind, it will be interesting to search the minutes for clues as to whether other officials are on the same page with their chief. If so, the US dollar is likely to come under renewed selling interest, while equities and other risk-linked assets may rebound on expectations that the Fed will do whatever it takes to support an economy severely hit by the coronavirus pandemic. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, during the early European uh, morning, we already got the UK CPIs for January, with both the headline and core CPI rates coming in better than anticipated. Later in the day, we get inflation data from Canada as well. 
The headline rate is expected to have ticked up to 0.8% year over year from 0.7%, while no forecast is available for the core rate. At its prior meeting, the Bank of Canada decided to keep interest rates and the, and the pace of its QE purchases unchanged, disappointing those expect, expecting a small cut or even an increase in QE. Officials also noted that uh, as the Governing Council gains confidence in the strength of the recovery, the pace of net purchases of uh, Government of Canada bonds will be adjusted as required, which suggests that the next uh, policy step for uh, the Bank of Canada may be tapering quantitative easing. However, the employment report for January disappointed with the unemployment rate rising to 9.4% from 8.9% and the net change in employment showing that the economy uh, has lost 212.8 thousand jobs. Now, with that in mind, although a bit higher an inflation rate well below the Bank of Canada's inflation aim of um, of 2% is unlikely to suggest that uh, tapering may be on the cards in the months to come. And disappointment could even push back expectations on that front, something that may prove negative for the Canadian dollar. That said, with oil prices climbing higher and the overall market sentiment staying supported, we believe that such a reaction will prove to be temporary. Eventually, the commodity linked currency may, re may recover its inflation-related uh, losses and continue to trend north at least against uh, the safe heavens. In the US, we have the retail sales and industrial production data for January. Both uh, headline and core sales are expected to have rebounded 1% month over month after falling 0.7 and 1.4% respectively, while industrial production is forecast to have slowed to 0.4% month over month from 1.6%. The American Petroleum Institute report on crude oil inventories for last week is also coming out, but as it is always the case, no forecast is available. Tonight, during the Asian Morning Thursday, we get Australia's employment report for January. The unemployment rate is forecast to have slid to 6.5% from 6.6%, while the net change in employment is expected to show that the economy has added another 40,000 jobs, a slowdown from the 50,000 in December. We also have one speaker on today's agenda, and this is the Richmond Fed President Thomas Barkin. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.